Lighthouses are a storied part of American history. They've not only lit the path for ships and boats, but guided the way for the country's founding. This Wednesday marks the 300th birthday of America's first lighthouse, now a National Historic Landmark. Mark Albert takes us ashore. Jetting off into Boston Harbor aboard a Coast Guard boat, we follow the currents of history, navigating to a beacon older than the Republic. When we dock on Little Brewster Island, we're greeted by a woman dressed like it's 1783. She's Sally Snowman, the last Coast Guard lighthouse keeper in America. What's it like living on an island with a lighthouse? Uh, <laughs> a dream come true. Boston Lighthouse has been both a dream and a vision for countless mariners through the centuries. Three centuries, in fact. So people have been walking up this way to the base of the lighthouse for 300 years? Absolutely. And Snowman's job is to safeguard it for the next 300. She makes rounds twice a day and took us along on a cloudy Thursday in July, starting at the lighthouse's imposing granite base that's seven and a half feet thick. You're gonna be touching part of the original 1716 Foundation. Right now. Right now, you're touching it. Built 60 years before the American Revolution, Boston Lighthouse has weathered countless storms, some man-made. The American rebels set it on fire twice to stop it from guiding occupying British forces. George Washington himself gave the order the second time. Then the Redcoats, in their retreat from Boston in 1776, blew up the lighthouse. The victorious Americans finally rebuilt it in 1783. It's been raised in stages through the centuries, now towering over Boston Harbor at 89 feet tall, almost nine stories. 76 spiral stairs and two ladders. As the conical walls get narrower, we reach the first ladder. Okay, come on up. We are in the gear room. This is what makes the light turn. Exactly. It rotates 4,000 pounds of glass and brass. And when we look up inside, we see a short little bulb or lamp that's 1,000 watts. It's tiny. It's tiny, and it gets magnified to 2 million candle power. By all the glass. By all the glass. Another ladder takes us to the crystal orb that saved countless lives, 336 prisms in a 13-foot-tall Fresnel lens. Unusual for a lighthouse, it rotates counterclockwise, a light that cuts through the darkness every 10 seconds, visible at least 27 nautical miles away. The light gets reflected and refracted and into a narrow beam, into the bullseyes, and that's what we see flashing. Wow, this is breathtaking. Oh my gosh, and there's downtown Boston. Absolutely, and imagine on the 3rd and 4th of July, fireworks everywhere, up and down the North Shore, the South Shore, panoramic views. You've got the best view in Boston. Absolutely. Snowman has been a keeper for 13 years and oversees a team of 90 volunteers. She took us to her favorite spot on the island, a windy perch few get to experience. When you sit up here, do you think of your predecessors hundreds of years ago, sitting and taking in this view? Absolutely. I mean, I've been up here at 3 o'clock in the morning. It's just been awesome. It's a magical place. Even when it's foggy, it feels like you're cloaked, that nothing can happen to you, that you're safe. The lighthouse is one of 371 operated by the U.S. Coast Guard. They're volunteers, about 1,000. Claudia Gelzer is the captain of the port in Boston. Why in the world does a 21st century Coast Guard need a three-century-old lighthouse. She has been serving really the same purpose for 300 years and keeping mariners out of trouble, out of shoal waters, and, and guiding them safely into Boston Harbor. Mariners wanted to go to ports that had lighthouses because it was safer for them to navigate in and out. Eric J. Dolan is the author of the recent book, Brilliant Beacons, A History of the American Lighthouse. He says Boston Lighthouse allowed its young city to thrive and expand, and lighthouses all along the East Coast reeled in commerce for a newborn nation. We would not be the country we are today without the service that lighthouses and their dependable keepers have provided. In your book, you call them beacons? and sentinels. Yeah, these towering uh, symbols of welcome and safety. But in an age of GPS, radar, and sonar, many wonder if these symbols of another era should drift into history. 
why not just tear down some of these lighthouses? Some lighthouses have been torn down, but many lighthouses are so integrally entwined with the history and the identity of the communities where they are located that if you try to tear down a lighthouse, you are going to have a political uprising. Just ask Congress. While the Coast Guard has automated all of its lighthouses, lawmakers decreed in 1989 that Boston Lighthouse, the nation's first, be forever manned as a tribute. Which is why Sally Snowman is the latest in a long line of keepers to live on Little Brewster Island, kept company by her husband Jay. In 300 years, how many keepers have there been? I'm the 70th, and the first 69 were all men. You're the first woman keeper? Out here at Boston Light. Still making history after three centuries. Absolutely, and we're going to keep on making it. Inside her front door is a sign that reads, we'll leave the light on for you. At Boston Lighthouse, that isn't just a saying. It's an unblinking promise kept for centuries. For CBS This Morning Saturday, Mark Albert in Boston Harbor. To celebrate the tricentennial, there'll be a ceremony on the island on Wednesday, September 14th, the lighthouse's official birthday. Tours are available weekly through the National Park Service.